picture. Yeah. Hey, let's. Uh, you and you're you a little, got more so a little like dim. It's just sort of like. We should just keep going in and out. And be, We're just having like fun. An art this show. is public access. Yeah. It's live. You want to hear what some of this, uh, this whack job uh, Brandon House thinks about stuff? You want to? Yeah, let's hear it. Well, he uh, uh, apparently has uh, compiled a list. He loves the Hitler comparison thing. Oh. He loves that. He, it's a, I don't. I think just essentially all this little digest is is it's a whole bunch of ads for his rallies and his DVDs and and other you know the AFA and other little Christian groups interspersed with uh, like five articles that he's written, which you can probably also find on his website. And they're all by him. And uh, I wanted to echo something that Tracy said recently in a comment on, on the AE blog. Uh, when I had earlier in the week, uh, I did uh, a blog post against mm -hmm. spoofing this guy. And uh, she mentioned that, you know, for a bunch of people, or at least for one person, but, you know, he's, he's part of a whole you know, cadre of, you know, ultra right wing fundangelicals here. It's like for a bunch of people who would no doubt tell you if you ask them, that they have found in their lives the ultimate in peace and happiness and tranquility. They don't seem very peaceful and happy when you read uh, their writings here. I mean, they, they, uh, these are people who are thoroughly immersed in fear and mistrust and suspicion. And they see enemies hiding around every corner waiting to, waiting to take them down. They really, really get a lot of mileage out of their desire to think of themselves as victims. Uh, and their desire to be martyrs. They really want to be martyrs. But uh, anyway, old Brandon Howes here has come up with, uh, I'm sorry if I keep flipping back and forth because um, you know, the, these articles all kind of look alike. Uh, but he's come up with 25 comparisons between America today and uh, Nazi Germany. Would you like to hear what some of them are? Is one of them that they're both countries? Uh, well, you see, that would, that would have been my thought for a second. I'm like, well, what are some of the comparisons we can make? Like Nazi Germany, they had trees. And we've got trees, and they had roads with car little cars driving around the roads. Sanitation, a, sanitation. Oh, and they illegally invaded a country under false pretenses, and so did we. So that's another one that I thought. Well, um, <laughs> did any of those make the list? Um, no. What have uh, the Romans ever done for us? Right. Um, so, but this just gives you an idea of this man's really skewed ideas about reality. Let's get the list. Uh, well, number one, Hitler outlawed school prayer in Germany. In 1962, the U.S. Supreme Court did the same for us. Actually, no, that's not true. It is not true at all. The Supreme Court what did was outlaw outlawed? school. Uh, ma mandatory mandatory school, school prayer. School-led school prayer. Your kids can still pray in school. They can still read a Bible in school. They can still be part of Youth for Christ. They can still have their little clubs. What we did was we actually enacted a bit of freedom that says you can't show favoritism towards these religions. Um, if an atheist club wants to get together, if other student groups want to get together, they should have access to the same stuff. And if because we cannot possibly construct a prayer that would make everybody happy, then we don't construct a prayer for anybody so that the Muslim child and the Scientologist child, and by the way, I realize I'm pissing Richard Dawkins off as I say this, but I'm, I'm doing it a little <laughs> sarcastically. I don't think that they're Muslims off. Uh, so that their religious sensibilities aren't offended just because the uh, principal at the school wants to pray a Christian prayer. Anyway, that was way too much. So it was all about, uh, so you're saying it's all about fairness towards everyone. Yeah. Well, mm. Yes, but uh, you know, Brandon House doesn't like that kind of thing. He said he, well, he, his idea is diversity is perversity. That's a direct quote from him. Do any from of his things rallies. actually match up, or are they all as badly mismatched? Well, as let me just give you a couple more here. Um, let's see. Uh, Hitler controlled the church using intimidation and threats. A half century ago, U.S. Senator and Senate Majority Leader Lyndon Baines Johnson promoted a bill that included an amendment to use the Internal Revenue Service to remove the nonprofit status of a church that speaks against the election of any specific political candidate. So, well, yeah, well, see, well, well, see, this is what it is not controlling the church. I mean, the, the whole thing was, first of all... Um, well, they're, they're saying, oh, you, you like this tax-exempt status you have? Yeah. Well, then you can't politicize. You can't endorse candidates. It's, it's a way of stopping mission funds. If you're going to yeah. take money from people, you don't get to then use it to, to support political parties. Or tax, uh, specifically, yeah. taxpayer money. Um, I mean, we, as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, cannot endorse... Can okay. We can talk about issues, and so can yeah. churches. Yeah, but we, we can't make political, you know, we can't say elections are happening and this is our guy for president and vote for him. We can't do that. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, why? Now, the, here's one that I think and is I, kind I of interesting. I probably wouldn't want to, because, mm -hmm. anyway, go ahead. Uh, let's see, here's example number, uh, well, there's, here's, there's, of course, the obvious comparisons between the, uh, the Nazi Holocaust and abortion. 
Um, now, this one's weird. Hitler believed in reincarnation. Uh, so do Christians. Well, our resurrection more precisely, but ultimately, you know, coming back from the dead. So why they would consider that a bad thing. But anyway, he says, he even convinced SS officers that by murdering millions of Jews and other, quote, undesirables, they were allowing them to get on with the reincarnation process and come back more quickly in an advanced status. And then he, and how does that compare to us? Well, apparently Americans increasingly accept the idea of reincarnation as well as good and bad karma. All right, now didn't we just have a report from this church in Missouri where the shooting was? Talking about, again, bad excuses for bad things happening. You know, God allowed the shooting to occur because da 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 da, right? And, and yet here, presumably, we're being told that Hitler had all of these excuses justifying, you know, why it would be a good idea to kill the Jews, which, by the way, um, I haven't, you know, I've read up some, I'm, I'm not an expert on it, but I have read up quite a bit on, you know, the Third Reich, and, and um, ultimately, I think that that, the whole reincarnation process really was of no consequence whatsoever to Hitler. He just wanted the Jews gone. Right. I mean, he. It the was big just, thing is, is that you know you're he, talking about. Yeah, let's say, let's say this was true. It was about saving Germany. It was about protecting. No, let's Germany. say let's say that Brannon's okay, accusation is true. Let's that say Hitler true. used reincarnation for this. Um, who's using reincarnation for anything remotely similar in our country? I mean, the fact that <laughs> yeah, to the extent somebody. I mean, this is this is like the the atheist claim. You know, oh, Hitler was an atheist. No, he wasn't. I mean, you might as well be saying Hitler had a mustache. So people with mustaches are bad. Or if Hitler was a vegetarian. Yeah. Or he loved his dog. You know, I mean, it's, so dog lovers must all be Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. And e even if you're right. Um, that more people in the United States are accepting reincarnation. It's, it's hardly the dominant or predominant theory. And by the way, you haven't demonstrated that there's anything wrong with it or that it's necessarily evil. You're just making, hey, look, this happened. It's something I consider evil. And look, something similar to what's happening here. So therefore, watch out. Now, here's one where I think he probably missed the irony of what he was writing because he inadvertently compares himself now to the Nazis, not the... Uh, where he says, pastors who spoke against Hitler's worldview and his murderous regime found themselves on trial and frequently imprisoned for, quote, abuse of pulpit. In America, hate crime legislation has the potential to criminalize Christians and pastors who speak out against the homosexual agenda. He no, he's well, not. Well, no, again, he's saying, okay, pastors who spoke out against anti-Semitism right. were punished. By Hitler. By Hitler. And now he's saying the comparison in the, the way things are working in America is that pastors who speak out in favor of prejudice and bigotry against homosexuals yes. are, no. now, are now going to be penalized. Ah. So that's what I meant. Ah. I see. There, yeah. yes. He is, so, he's admitting his own bigotry. Yeah, so this little thing is just a, it's, it's a window into a strange alternate universe that exists behind uh, this man's ears and a lot of people. You know, one thing we, we always, I, I usually see whenever I write about this kind of stuff on the blog or we get emails or what have you, and there's always someone, and, you know, bless them, they want to have, they, they really want to s believe in the, the better aspects of humanity. They, they don't want to uh, think that anyone can really, really be this horrible and this stupid and this uh, knuckleheaded, and uh, uh, it must all be an act. It must be a put on. He's just doing this to sell DVDs to the rubes. And uh, he really doesn't believe all this kind of stuff. He's saying, no, I think he does. I think he really has, I, I think these folks are pathological. They really have convinced themselves of this strange um, world uh, that they think they're living in. Uh, so it's, it's a little alarming, but it's worth the kind of knowing what's out there. I don't see that these folks are any kind of tangible threat, but uh, they're certainly a nuisance. And it certainly is the kind of thing that I think really does need to stand up, uh, to, to be stood up. To, and to be spoken out against and to be yeah. challenged every time because it's, it's very easy. I think when, when a lot of atheists say, oh, well, he can't really mean it, or you know, guys like Ray Comfort, well, I, you know, no one can be that stupid. It's all just a big put-up job so that he can you know, make money. Uh, no, I really think that this sort of thing is, uh, is really what goes on in the heads of these folks. They really do have these beliefs and attitudes and this outlook on humanity. This is what they call their Christian worldview. Um, and, of course, to make everyone, to make any criticism of their worldview, um, you know, sound sort of invalid right out of the gate, they want to be postmodern in their own little way and say, well, that's just your atheist worldview or your materialist worldview or your other worldview. Yeah. Well, we have the Christian worldview, and there's more of us, so we win. You know, truth becomes a popularity contest at that point with these people. But
But um, it's certainly worth uh, checking this kind of stuff out. I write about this sort of thing uh, rather frequently on the Atheist Experience blog. Um, which there may be the uh, you know uh, URL for up on screen there, um, but I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to kind of bring this by, a window into a very scary, strange world, and uh, maybe I'll be commenting on some more of this stuff and things that appear on their website where the real fun happens uh, on occasion on the blog. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.